Mabuhay! This is Coach Rail of Chess Express and now I am with my two kids here. Mabuhay! Hello, I am Ella of Chess Express, daughter of Coach Rail. Mabuhay! Hello there, I am Bobby of Chess Express, son of Coach Rail. This is my first vlog. I want to share chess lessons that will surely improve beginners games. If you find it interesting, please click the subscribe button. Following this, we will study next chess games of club players and chess kids where you can learn something that you might be able to apply in your games and other chess lessons that will make you improve. Before we start, I want to express a disclaimer that I am not a chess master. I am only a club player, but I'm sure I would be able to share something for the improvement of beginners. I have two kids whom I coach and became at one time representative of my country in the ASEAN age group and in the Eastern Asia tournaments. Let us start. Our lesson is how to improve your games by mastering checkmate patterns. What is the importance of mastering and memorizing the names of checkmate patterns? If you study the checkmate patterns without memorizing the names, you can only identify them in your games when you are near the situation or near the position. But if you know the names, then you can plan ahead to reach that position whenever you see similarities. This is especially to beginners. Let us see this example from a 13-year-old Bobby Fisher. In this position, we do not see the checkmate yet. But of course, we can calculate for it. If you are a beginner, it is very hard to calculate, but if you know the pattern, then it would be easier. Here, Bobby Fisher plays knight g3, check. And his opponent has no other moves except for king e1. And Bobby Fisher, he plays bishop b4. But Bobby Fisher has a faster mate here. Rook e2 check. And of course, king d1, bishop b3, king c1, bishop a3, king b1, and rook e1. This is a faster mate by the way. But this is not the, the pattern that we are studying. So let's go back. Bishop b4 check. All of white's moves are forced, just like in the variation we saw. King d1, bishop b3, king c1, knight e2, king b1, knight c3, king c1, and rook c2. Checkmate. Also, Bobby Fisher has, has another checkmate here, bishop e3. But this is also not the pattern we are studying. This is the pattern after rook c2. And this pattern can be called the 20th century mate. It's called like that because um, Bobby, there is a game between Bobby Fisher and Donald Byrne and this is the last position of their game. And this game is called the game of the century.
Okay, so the next mate that we will discuss is called Anastasia's mate. And in this position, you'll see a tactical motive wherein the knight deli delivers a checkmate on the king along with the queen or the rook. If you would notice, the h7 pawn is weak, and in this position, the mate would be done in exploiting the weakness on h7 square, and also on the open file on the h file. So, can you spot the checkmate? I will give you 10 seconds to see if you can spot the checkmate, or you can pause the video and see the solution. And now, the 10 seconds starts. Now, 10 seconds has ended. And so, we will show you how Anastasia's mate looks like. The first move is knight e7 check. This forces the king to go to h8, the only square it can go to. The next move is queen takes h7 check, wherein the king is forced to capture the queen because it has no other moves to do. And the last move for this mate is rook h1 checkmate. As you can see, the weakness on the h file and the h7 square has been exploited and this tactical motive on checkmating the king can help you in case it happens in your games. The next is the Arabian meat. So where did this meat come from and why is it called like that? This meat is derived from the old version of chess which is called Shatranj. Shatranj is an ancestor of chess from Persia. After the Arabians took over Persia, they also played it. In this game, uh, this game called Shatranj, they derived the Arabian mate and wrote it in manuscript. Here, th this is the mate. Um, knight f6 check. Remember that the king is pinned, so, so the pawn is pinned, so it cannot capture. King h8. And rook takes h7. Mate. This is a simple, yet important pattern to remember. There are many for, there are many ways to checkmate like this. So please carefully remember this pattern. The next mate we are going to study is called the background mate. Uh, it is called like that because it occurs along the back rank. The back rank for black is this rank, the eighth rank. And for white, the first rank. These ranks are very important to, re to guard and be careful about because many tactical motives may spring up from these ranks. And here, white as a tactical motive and can you spot it? I will give you time. Um, for, um, 10 seconds. And that starts right now. So the 10 seconds has ended, and the move here is queen takes e4, a deflection, and the deflection is a tactical motif um, we will talk about in future videos. So after queen takes e4, white wins a rook, because after rook takes e4, there is rook c8 check, and, there, and it is already made in two after queen d8 and either rook d takes d8 or rook c oh wait i'm, I'm delete my rook t rook d takes d8 or rook 
or rook c takes d8. So rook c takes d8, rook e8, and now the checkmate occurs. Rook takes e8, checkmate. The background mate has been achieved by white. Okay, okay, so how to avoid this checkmate? First of all, guard your back rank with a piece. Watch out for tactical motives like that. Calculate for the tactical motives. And the second way is to have a loft. A loft is a prophylactic, prophylactic measure or move which does not allow any background mate. Examples of lofts are h6, h5, g6, g5, and f5. But if the king is on h8, then, you're, then the only lofts possible are g6, g5, h6, and h5. So be careful to guard your background and have lofts. <laughs> Also, back rank mates can occur um, when you have a loft, but you cannot go. You cannot go to the the, the free space or the escape square that the loft has given you because a piece or a pawn is not allowing you to do so. That's also a background mate. So be please be car careful and look if your loft if you see a tactical motive by your opponent and the background along the background and you want you are forced to make a laugh please make sh please be sure that there is no piece or pawn that guards that love and if you are the one who will deliver the background mate calculate it carefully and also the g-pawn sometimes goes here when black has weakened his king side as for example playing f6 and sometimes um you can deliver the checkmate either with the h pawn here or the h pawn here and that's also background so let's move on to the next checkmating pattern and so the next mate that we will tackle is called the blackburn's mate which is named after joseph henry blackburn a famous british chess player now in this position you can see that the dark squared bishop and the light squared bishop are very strong pieces the dark squared bishop controls the a1 to h8 diagonal, while the light squared bishop controls the b1 to h7 diagonal. The knight is also a very threatening piece in the king side. And so you can see how these three pieces overpowers the black enemy camp. In this position, can you spot the checkmate? I will give you 10 seconds to spot the checkmate, or you can pause the video and think of the solution to this checkmate. And the 10 seconds start now. now. Ten seconds has ended. And so in this checkmate, you can see how the queen sacrifices itself to checkmate the black cap. The first move is queen takes h5. This forces black to capture the queen because otherwise the queen would checkmate the black king in h7. The next move is she takes h5 which is a forced move. And the last move is bishop h7 checkmate. The powerful light squared bishop delivers a checkmate towards the black king. You can see how these three minor pieces are really very strong, stronger than the other pieces in the black camp. Knowing this tactical motive can help you in your games in case you see this checkmate pattern.
Next is the Bowden Smith. This mate is named after Samuel Standage Bowden, an English chess master. The checkmate. Okay, as you can see, the this bishop is controlling this diagonal, the h2 b8 diagonal. And it's it's not a surprise that a tactical strike or a combination can be here. Here, the combination starts with a queen sacrifice. Queen takes c6. Check. Of course, black has no other move like um, other than bishop takes c6. Oh, and then bishop a6. Check me. As you see, this bishop is very strong here. It controls the h to b8 diagonal, and black king is checkmated. Please remember this pattern because it can happen in your games. And be careful to castle on the queen side if you have already played c6 or you don't you no longer have um, your c pawn here. And please be careful to castle on the queen side. See or calculate if there is a tactical motive like that. Now, I will show you the box mate. The box mate can be achieved in the middle and on the sides. In this position, actually you can checkmate the king, the white king, in three moves. When I was a kid, this position is a three move puzzle for beginners and it was very hard for me so here you just need to move the rook past the king so that we can stop the white king from escaping okay so we will play Rook c5 or c4, c3, rook c2 or rook c1. And then, only move for white is king e8. So, we will stop the uh, escape square of the white king. We move the rook to f5. And white has only the d8 square to go so king d8 and then now we can deliver the box mate by rook f8 so the next mate is called the kojo's mate which is named after carlo kojo an italian chess player and chess theorist it can also be called the dovetails mate so in this position as you can see black is up a pawn however that pawn and b5 serves as a burden for the escaping square of the queen, or the king, rather. And so in this position, can you spot the checkmate in two moves? I will give you 10 seconds to see if you can spot the checkmate. Or you can pause the video and try to find a solution. seconds has ended and so the first move is queen a7 check this forces black to move to the only square it can go to which is b4 king b4 the next move is queen a3 checkmate as you can see as I have mentioned a while ago b5 pawn serves as a burden in the escaping square of the king. Now, knowing this checkmate is not just for the players who are down a pawn. If you are up a pawn in queen 
end games, this will be a very important tactical motif that you need to watch out for because these types of tricks can determine if you will win the game or lose the game. Or even if you are in the defending side, you must watch out for that checkmating pattern. Yes, because it will help you to do this trick so that you can win the game. Next is the Damianos mate. Okay, this mate is named after Pedro Damiano, a Portuguese chess player. So, here, we attack the king's side. This commonly happens when you have pawn on g3. If that is a bishop, then the mate that will occur is called the Damianus bishop mate. But if it's a, it's a pawn, it's called the Damianus mate. So here, as you see, white is threatening checkmate in two moves. But black, but, but it's black's turn. And, and there is mate in five moves here. Can you see the checkmate? Okay, the checkmate is, the checkmate occurs after rook h1, check, king takes h1. By the way, all, all moves of white are forced. Rook h8, check, king g1, rook h1, king takes h1, queen h8, check, king g1, and mate in 1, queen h2, check me. So please, please remember this mate, if you're either of both sides, if you're the one being attacked, be careful, uh, defend, defend your position. Be careful not to open the H file if if you can. And if you're the one who is attacking, please remember this tactical motif. It might occur, and you you might op try to open the H file. With this, the H file is extremely important because many other checkmate patterns can occur. And of course, if we, if the H file is very weak. For your opponent, then many tactical motifs can occur along that file. Or if your opponent castled on the queen side, the a file is is the counterpart of the h file on the queen side. Okay, so please remember this pattern. We we'll move on to the next pattern. The, the next mate is called the Appellate's mate. The Appellate's mate. Okay. As you can see, Black's king is in a critical position. And it's not so it's no surprise that a checkmate a checkmate or a combination might occur here. However, White's king is also a bit weak here. It is vulnerable, vulnerable to, uh, to attacks like rook b2, queen takes g4, or just the rook and queen. So here, white must force, must force to force to to, to mate or to find a combination or a forcing line. Oh, so here there is checkmate in two, and can you spot the checkmate? So the checkmate here is after rook h5, check, g takes h5, and then queen f6. This is the appellate's mate. It can occur in many ways. For example, the king at the back rank with two rooks, with two rooks beside and a queen checkmating the king. So, the, so that's the appellate mate. In this case, what we see is a rare form of appellate mate because it occurs at the side, but the upper the appellate mate commonly occurs when the king as it is at the background and there are two rooks beside it. The next mate is called the Greco's mate, which is named after Gioacchino Greco, a famous Italian chess player of the seventeenth century. 
Now, in this position, as you can see, the light squared bishop is a very powerful piece since it controls the a2 to g8 diagonal. And the h7 pawn is weak due to the rook on h1 which controls the open file. In this position, the queen, the rook, and the bishop house each other towards delivering checkmate in the black king side. Can you spot the checkmate? I will give you 10 seconds to see if you can spot the checkmate or you can pause the video and try to find a solution. The 10 seconds starts now. Ten seconds has ended, and so the checkmate starts with rook takes h7 check. This forces the black king to capture the rook on h7 since the light squared bishop controls the a2 to g8 diagonal, so it cannot go to g8. After king takes h7, the next move is queen h5 checkmate as you can see the light squared bishop is a very powerful piece that serves as a block on the escaping square a square rather of the king this is a very important tactical motive especially if you are attacking in the king side and you have an open h file or if it's in the queen side the open a file once I was six years old, I was tricked by my opponent, and he he delivered the checkmate to me. But before I, but before he moved his queen to h5, I already resigned. So please remember this this tactical motif and checkmate pattern. So, so let's move on to the next checkmate pattern. Hello, the next mate we are going to study is called hooks mate. Okay, in this position, um, black's back rank is weak, and we can exploit that fact by playing rook b8, threatening the queen, and after queen a6, or any other move, queen move, but queen a6 is the only safe queen, it's a square for the queen, um, we have rook g8, checkmate. Please remember this pattern. This is a very important one because this uh, um, occasional occurs, especially in rook and rook plus knight endings. And why is that? Why is this called hook mate? Because of this pattern. Let's see. So it is called hook it, because it looks like a hook. Okay guys, let's move on to the next pattern. Here is the Loli's mate. It is named after Giambattista Loli, an Italian chess player. So you can achieve this mate by checkmating the king on g7. But in this position, the g7 square is guarded by the knight on e6. So in this position, there is a tactical motif that is called removing the guard. So a lesson on tactics or tactical motives will be dealt later after this video or in the succeeding videos that I'm planning to make. So here, we can take out the knight, or it is called removing the guard, so that we can deliver the lawless mate. So you can take back the white's rook by the pawn on e7, or the rook on e8. Rook takes e6, and either way, Lolly's mate is a success. Queen g7 checkmate.
Okay, so the next mate is called the Max Lange mate. It is named after Max Lange himself, a German chess player and a chess problem composer. Now, as you can see in this position, the queen on b8 can deliver a checkmate on the g8 square. However, the knight on f6 guards this square. Now, white must find a move to make the knight leave his duty on defending the g8 square. Can you spot the move that would help white checkmate the black king? I will give you five seconds only to spot this move. Okay, five seconds has ended. And so, the move is Rook takes e4. This is called a deflection. You are deflecting a piece away from the square that it is guarding or defending so you can deliver a powerful move. For example, a checkmate or even a tactic. Now, queen c1 check, king h2. There is no other move besides knight takes e4 because in this position, if the knight does not capture e4, then black is a rook down and it would be extremely very hard for black to even get, get a draw from this position. It's impossible actually. Yes. And then... If knight takes e4, the move is queen g8 checkmate. But now, this checkmate is actually quite rare, and it doesn't happen very often in games. However, that doesn't mean that you should not remember this checkmate, because who knows, it could happen in your games, or it could be a motive that you can plan ahead in your games. Especially if the... Bishop is controlling the a2 g8 diagonal and the bishop is on f7. Or if it's a dark squared bishop, the h2 2 b8 diagonal. And if the king is castled on the queen side. Or, you, or if black is the one checkmating and the, bish, the dark squared bishop must be on f2 or on c2. Or a light squared bishop is on c2 depending on wh where side white castle okay let's move on to the next tech meeting pattern so next is the mayet's mate it is named after karl mayet a german chess master and one of the most original of the berlin pleiades or the seven stars of german chess so this may usually occurs in a Sicilian dragon where both are attacking the opponent's king. So in the mate's mate, you can deliver the mate on the corner. As you can see, the edge pile is already open. So, can you see the combination? Please pause the video if you want to find the combination. Okay, so, this is delivered by sacrificing the queen on the corner. Queen h8 check. And then the only defense is bishop takes h8. And then the mate's mate is achieved by taking the bishop on h8 and checkmating the black king. Next is the opera mate. It is named when Paul Morphy played it at the Paris Opera against Duke Carl of Brunswick and Count Isoward in 1858. The opera mate is similar to the Mayet's mate. The difference is that the Mayet's is delivered on the sides of the board and the opera is delivered in the middle. This mate was made with a very nice combination by Paul Morphy sacrificing his queen to achieve 
the Opera Mate. So here it goes. Bishop takes d7 check and Black is forced to take with the Knight. Knight takes d7 and now Paul Morphy sacrifices his Queen on b8. Queen b8 check. Knight takes b8 and Rook d8 checkmate and the upper mate is made for the first time. Um, and now we move on to the next checkmating pattern the Morphis mate. What is the Morphis mate? The Morphis mate is named after Paul Morphy. And here, a tactical strike. Actually, let me talk about Paul Murphy first. Paul Murphy is a famous um, American chess player and an official world champion, if I'm not mistaken, from 1858 to 1862. Paul Murphy is a very strong player, and this checkmate we will see is is the na the mate that is linked to him okay so can you find the tactical shot remember that this rook is very strong the d file on the d file it's just it's just pointing towards of the black king and this it's very dangerous for black so Try to pause the video and try to find the tactical shot I'm talking about. Why to play and wins. Ready? Okay. The tactical shot or the solution I'm talking about is Bishop F6. As we see, why this threatening Rook takes D7 and Queen takes B5 at the same time. However, if you will notice, the queen is hanging. So this queen sacrifice is very strong because after queen takes h5, even if the pawn is up here, it would have been it would still win for white. But that will not be a mate. However, in this position, we can immediately mate black. Rook takes g7. Jack. King h8 and the Morphis mate is achieved after rook the rook moving along the g file except for g8. This is the this is ridiculous why do you put the rook there? Okay. And after rook g6 rook g6 rook g5 rook g5 rook g6 rook g5 rook g4 rook g3 or any except for rook g8, we will mate black and we have achieved the so called Murphy's move. So, okay, let's us move on to the next checkmate thing. Pattern. Okay, the next checkmating pattern we are gonna talk about is called Pillsbury's mate. So, Pillsbury's mate is named after Harry Nelson. Pillsbury, a former leading American chess player, and it's a very strong one. Okay, and now I'm gonna say to you that Pillsbury's mate is very similar to the Morphy's mate. They are actually the same in pattern, except that in Pillsbury's mate, instead of the bishop, which is the one checkmating the king, in Pillsbury's mate. The rook is the one that checkmates the king. So, can you spot the killer move that wins a piece here? I'm gonna give you 5 or 10 seconds, but 10 seconds, sorry, um, to find the tactical shot. And that 10 seconds begins right now.
Okay, guys, the solution is queen takes f6. Queen takes f6. Okay, this wins a piece. Because after g takes f6, white has smitten three moves. And the continuation is forced for both sides. Bishop takes f6. Check. King g8. Rook g1. Check. Queen g4. Rook takes g4. Checkmate. Do you see the similarity between Pillsbury's mate and Murphy's mate? Okay. Okay, we may now move on to the next checkmating pattern. Okay, so the next mate is called the Reddy's mate. It is named after Richard Reddy, an Austro-Hungarian, later Czechoslovak chess grandmaster. After delivering this checkmate against his fellow chess master, Kogelik Takovar, in 1910. Now, in this position, you will be able to see the game between Tartakova and Reddy, wherein Reddy delivers a 3-move checkmate. Can you spot the 3-move checkmate? I will give you 15 seconds to see if you can spot the checkmate. And it begins now. Okay, so 15 seconds has ended. So the first move is Queen d8 check. This forces Black to capture the Queen since there are no other squares to go to. And this is called a decoy since the Queen forced the King to go to a bad square. Now why is it a bad square for the King to go to d8? Surely it is a safe square since there are no attackers in this position. Well, that's where you're wrong, because the rook on d1 attacks the king indirectly. But how can you attack the king using the rook? We have a very powerful move, which is bishop g5 check. This is called a discovered attack, since the attacker, which is the rook on d1, attacks the black king. And this is also called discovered check, since both the bishop and the rook on d1 checks the king. It is also called a double check since both of those pieces check the king. Now, the king has two places or squares to go to, which is c7 and d, uh, no, e8 rather. Now, if the king goes to e8, it could easily be seen that the rook on d1 can deliver a powerful punch or checkmate towards the black king in d8. Which is uh, called the opera mate, which is discussed by Cottrell in our in our the last of our, our last last checkmate pattern. Yes, it is a very powerful checkmate, and as you can see, it is easily seen or spotted. Now, besides e8, there is another square the king can go to, and that is c7. King c7. Now, it looks like the king on c7 is very very safe there are no more attackers or else it seems however have you forgotten that there is a bishop on g5 now that is a very sneaky and powerful piece in there and so it delivers a powerful checkmate bishop d8 checkmate and this is an 11 move game of Rick between richard Ratty and Savielli tartakova yes there is no escaping square, rather, for the king, since the d1 rook blocks the escaping square in the d file, while the bishop takes care takes care of the escaping square in b6. Now, this checkmate is really very rare, of course, in games. In fact, it's so rare that you might not be able to see it easily, and you might not be able to plan it ahead of time. However, just in case that in the rare occasion that it happens, it would be very, very, very important that you know this tactical or checkmating pattern. Since it would help you to deliver this checkmate in the game. In case it happens, and that would be a very beautiful checkmate indeed. And so, it is even rarer than the Max Lange mate which I have mentioned before. It is also rare, yes, but this is even rarer. It's so rare that you won't be able to easily spot it. I don't even think that you have spotted it 
within the 15 seconds I gave you. But, as you can see a while ago if you're wondering why the queen cannot capture the g5 bishop, well then, the rook on d1 and the bishop on g5 are both checking the king, so there couldn't be any piece to capture both or to block the file on d5. I and think, so, with this... I think this is, will be a one in a million chance that you will deliver this checkmate. Yes, yes. But, it's so rare, but it's very beautiful, and you... If you are able to deliver this, I think most of the people who are watching your game will really, really admire your tactical skills. And also your tactical vision and the knowledge that you have on checkmating patterns. Okay, so we may now move on to the next checkmating pattern. When I was in high school, this position was a simple... Three moves made for beginners. But I sold for this for days. And I cannot find the solution. It took me about a week because I was a beginner at that time. Now, if you master this position, you can use it in your plan for your attack in your games. So, here you uh, white to move. Black is attacking you. So, you need to deliver checkmate. The, uh, otherwise, black will checkmate you on your back rank so here we will move the knight to h6 it is a double attack on the king king cannot move to f8 because of the checkmate on f7 by the queen by the white queen so king will go to the h8 and here we can sacrifice the queen. Check. Rook takes g8. And the smothered mate is achieved. Knight f7 checkmate. The next checkmating pattern and the last of the checkmating patterns that we will discuss to you is called suffocation mate. So, the, the, that is called like that because white suffocates or black suffocates the opponent's king along the long diagonal. The long diagonal is either the B, the A1, H8 diagonal or the B, or the A8, H1 diagonal. However, because it is, because it is white who is attacking here, it is called the, it is, along the b2 h8 diagonal a1 h8 diagonal rather so after bishop d7 white has an extreme tactical motive here by the way i want to share you a joke if you are attacking you should not retreat your pieces that's just a joke but that might be helpful here so please if okay try to find the killer move. You can pause the video and try to find it. Have, have you seen it? Oh well, the move is Queen takes G7. I'm sure you have seen it in under 5 seconds because it's a very easy one. It decoys the king towards the long diagonal and as you see in the diagram in the diagram the king is under heavy fire with the bishop and the knight is going to go to f5. However, if we don't know the f5, the f5 for example, 
how do we how do we proceed here the bishop is not directly attacking the king so but we had the amazing knight of five double check this is called double check because two pieces are checking the king and the double check is a kind of discovered check and the discovered check is where you do the discovered attack on the king and the discovered attack is where you when you are indirectly attacking a piece and then you remove the cover that allows you to directly attack the piece and in this case the king so it is called discover check and in this case two pieces are attacking the king therefore it is called discover the double check so i have explained much and now we have to continue king g8 check a king g8 check not check rather not check knight h6 checkmate you see how powerful this bishop must have been and it is more powerful than the queen and rook than, than, than all of black's pieces combined in just a cost with the cost of the queen okay but there is another form but which is this is more common, but this is the the original suffocation mate. Queen takes d7, king takes d7, knight c6 or knight f5 check, king g8, knight e7 checkmate. Okay, guys, th thank you for listening about this. By the way, there is a mate called David and Goliath. It is not a pattern, but a pawn move to checkmate the king. That's why I did not include any example. We tackled more than enough of the checkmate patterns, but check other resources for more information. I hope that this lesson will help you in your games. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. Please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. See you next time!